Welcome, I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. In this video, we want to continue our series on the Trinity, and we want to focus in on God the Father. In the last video, we looked at the boundary stones. We pointed out that the Bible has three main facts, three main truths that we must always stand by. The first one is that there is only one God. The second one is that the, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Spirit is God. And the third fact is that the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, and the Spirit is not the Father. And so we recognize those facts, even if we don't understand how they work together, we must base our faith on the Word of God. And those are taught clearly in the Word of God in many places. And so we see a distinction between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but we also say that each, see that each of them are, are God, and yet we see that there is only one God. So in this video, we want to focus in on God the Father. Now this is going to be probably the place where most that believe in Trinitarianism get tripped up because they get stuck on actually what the Bible says. But those that are outside of the Trinitarian camp, those like the, in the Unitarian camp, those that will deny the eternal deity of Jesus Christ, these will focus in on this truth and then they will argue with Trinitarians and Trinitarians will in some way with philosophy or some way they will try to argue against this truth. But this is not a truth that we should argue against. It's a truth that we should accept. And it is this, that in the New Testament, almost every single time that the Bible says God, it's talking about God the Father. And then that passes on to the Old Testament as well. And so it's a truth that the Father is God. And we want to look at that and focus in on that. For example, let's go to several passages here. Let's go to Romans chapter 1. And let's get this drilled into us before we move on because a lot of times what we will try to do is whenever people that hold to belief about the Trinity, whenever somebody says, no, the Father is God here, this verse is talking about the Father. And says, no, 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 it's talking about the Trinity. It's talking about God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so when we think of the term God, we always think in terms of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, but when the scripture talks about God, it's usually talking about the Father. So we see that Romans chapter one, starting in, Let's see, in verse 7, it says this, To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that God our Father, so the one that is referred to as God is the Father, and the Lord is Jesus Christ. If we flip over to 2 Corinthians, we could do this in almost every epistle, but if we flip over to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, let's see here in verse... Two, it says this, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Flip over to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 2. To Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. So we see that the distinction is very clear in these passages that God is the Father and Jesus Christ is the Lord. Let's go on and look at some others. Second, let's go to Second John. The second epistle to John, verse chapter one. All right, because there's only one chapter. So let's go to verse three. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father. God the Father. So the Father is God, God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. So we just see a distinction between God the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We, we can note this also if you go to the Apostles' Creed. We believe in one God, Almighty, we believe in uh, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord. So, we need to recognize that the, the early Christians, when they're writing and they're talking about God, in general, they're speaking about God the Father. This is almost universally the case. If we flip over to Jude, uh, go one page over to Jude, verse 1. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who are sanctified and called by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. So there is no way 
that a Trinitarian can look at these passages and say, when it's saying God here, it's talking about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we can't say that to those who are sanctified and called by God the Father, meaning God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and preserved in Jesus Christ. No, it's speaking very clearly about God the Father. This might be hard for us to accept, but this is the biblical language. And this is what those in the Unitarian camp will come against us with. They'll say, see, who is God? It tells us very clearly that it's the Father. And if we would try to get around it with some philosophy, even though we might have the the truth and the reality of the nature and character of God as a trinity on our side, but we are not going to have the scripture on our side. And so those that are involved in heresy and turning away from the true faith that are removing the boundary stones, they're going to have the advantage in any debate because they are always going to point to the fact that ah, 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 it says God is talking about the Father. Okay. Now let's go ahead and turn to some of the verses that will certainly be quoted by those in the, the camp of the Unitarians and others. We go to John chapter 17, verse 3. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So it must be made very clear here that there is distinction between you, Jesus is speaking to the Father, you, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So there is a distinction, a very clear distinction between God the Father, who is the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So again, we can't try to somehow change this verse and make it say that the only true God is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Jesus is talking to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and there's also Jesus Christ, the humanity, that he's making a distinction between. No, he, the Son, is talking to the Father, and the Father, he is calling him the only true God. Now, at this point, some of you are, are going to be thinking, what, he's, is, he a secret, is he a secret Unitarian trying to trick us? No, we're trying to go back to Scripture and see what the Bible teaches about the Trinity. We're trying to understand a, a, Trinitar- a biblical Trinitarian position, and not something philosophical, not something that we've kind of you know, accepted by tradition, but what the Bible is actually teaching. And when we come to understand that, the idea of the Trinity will be something very full. It won't be this mystery that's in our brain, but it's something that's clearly taught throughout Scripture. And so we're going to see that, but we're going through this step by step. And right now we need to focus on a truth that is often abused by those that are outside of orthodoxy, abused by those that attack the Trinity. But even though they abuse it, they're abusing it with verses that we need to pay attention to. And so here it says, this is the eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Now, remember the boundary stones. There's only one God. God the, there's, uh, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Spirit is God. So this doesn't deny that because the scripture teaches that. But right now, it's focusing our, our, it's focusing our minds that we focus in on the truth that when the Bible, especially the New Testament, but I guess the Old Testament as well, when it says God, it's speaking about the Father. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and turn also to... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. It says, But for us there is but one God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, from whom are all things and for whom we exist. Now, if you're following along, following along in your Bible, you will note that it does not say that. It does not say for us there is but one God, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It says, But for us there is but one God, the Father. And so, This is the focus of the New Testament. But here, this verse teaches us something. It tells us, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist. So here it shows the Father as the source of all things. This is why he is called the Father. He's the source. He's the giver of life. And from him, all things exist. If we were to read over in Revelation chapter 4, In verse 11, speaking to God the Father sitting on the throne, it says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you have created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. We believe in God the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth. This is the first point of the Apostles' Creed. 
that we believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And so we need to recognize he is the source of all creation. All life comes from him and exists for him. If we flip over to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, we see this applied to our salvation as well. 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the refugees scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. In other words, according to the predestined plan, according to his knowledge, his wisdom, his purpose. That's what this is getting at. According to elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification by the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling with the blood of Jesus Christ. So this verse is telling us that the purpose and the plan of salvation was planned by God. And then the Spirit of God is sent out to convict us and to bring us to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, where we're sprinkled with his blood, washed from our sins, and then we submit to him as Lord in obedience. But this, the source of our salvation, comes from God the Father, elect according to the foreknowledge of of God the Father. If we flip over to Galatians chapter 1, we say this put in another way. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we see the focus about God is the Father. Who gave himself, speaking of Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age. So Jesus came gave himself for us to deliver us from the power of this present evil age, from the power of darkness, power of sin, the power of the devil. So he came and gave himself for us to deliver us according to the will of God, of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So even in our salvation, in all of creation, God is glorified because he is the maker of heaven and earth. He is the source of all life. This is God, the Father, the creator the one true God, the only wise God. This is the one that we are looking at when we're talking about God, God our Father. And it was through him that he sent his son to die for us. He sent his son to deliver us. And his son came and died according to the will of the Father, according to the plan and purpose of God that he planned in himself from all eternity. So we need to understand and get our our, our, our thinking clear on this issue, make it biblical, that Whatever we understand about the Son, whatever we understand about the Spirit, the first thing we need to understand is that God is primarily referred to as the Father in the New Testament as well as in the Old. So when we're talking about the one true living God, we're talking about God the Father. Now, does this mean that Jesus is not God and that the Spirit is not God? It does not. We'll get to that in future videos, but we've already established the boundary stones that the Spirit is God, that the Son is God, and that the Father is God. But what we want to understand is the biblical focus whenever we're talking about this issue. When we, if we want to start talking about the Trinity, we cannot start anywhere else but with God the Father. Because he is the God the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth. He is the source, not only of all things that are created, but he is also the source of our salvation through Jesus Christ. And so, God willing, in the next video, we will talk about the Son of God and what the scripture says about him. But we want to start here and understand that we believe in the only true God, the Father. That there, for us, there is no other God but the Father, according to 1 Corinthians 8, 6, and according to John 17, 3. Hope this has been helpful to you. God bless.